The Brooklyn Nets this season at this point are pretty much the weirdest team in the league and by extension the biggest wild card in basketball. After James Harden was traded to this team, and more specifically after the concerns of the one ball limiting how dominant they could be, after those concerns were uh, thwarted, that's how you say it, right? After those concerns were gone, the consensus pretty much came across the board that the Brooklyn Nets were going to see themselves win a relatively easy championship in the near future. Then of course, they did not end up getting that opportunity in last year's playoffs due to injury, even though they did damn near get there with Kevin Durant carrying them almost to the Eastern Conference Finals. But either way, I think even he agrees that they would have burned out before actually going all the way. But after that, we still regrouped and said at the end of the day, even though the Bucks did win that championship, we're pretty sure they would have won if healthy and we're still pretty sure they're the favorite. But with just how weird they have been this year, and we're gonna talk about that at length here, it seems to me, and I feel this way, that there is more and more doubt seeping in with this Brooklyn Nets team in terms of how big of a threat they actually are. It's gotten to the point where I do not fear this Nets team to nearly the degree that I would have a year ago or just hearing about them on paper. In fact, if I was listing teams in order of who I think is most likely to win a championship, the Nets are either third or fourth, depending on how I feel about the Phoenix Suns that day. And even as someone who actually has stakes in it now that my team is actually somewhat in contention, I don't fear this Nets team as much as I do the Bucks and the Warriors and potentially even the Suns. So let's talk about the Brooklyn Nets. Before we continue on with the topic, I want to talk to you about today's sponsor, NordVPN. If you're a seasoned veteran of YouTube like I am, you've probably already heard of NordVPN. If you are not aware, a VPN is essentially a service that allows you to browse the internet safely and securely, whether on a private or public network. As someone whose job is on the internet, internet security is obviously very important to me, and NordVPN keeps your browsing and your data secure. Another great aspect of NordVPN is that it allows you to change what country you are browsing from and thus surpass the limitations of whatever country you're in. For example, Brooklyn Nine-Nine is one of my favorite comedies. It is not available on Netflix in the United States, but if I just change my location to Australia, I can get right back into simping over Rosa Diaz. And the best part about all of this is that you can get a huge discount if you use my link down in the description and in the pinned comment. Go to nordvpn.com rusty to get a two-year plan plus one additional month with a huge discount. It is risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. Thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video, and let's get on with the topic. So first things first has to be the injury stuff. We're kind of getting to the point with the Brooklyn Nets where we're doing the constant when they get healthy game. What I mean by that is it seems like we're constantly talking about what this team could be, and what they could be never actually comes because they constantly have some injury or another. The day when they're healthy isn't existent. It's never going to happen. Now, it's not impossible, but it kind of does feel that way. It's similar to the OKC Thunder for multiple years or the Lob City Clippers for multiple years. It was always, well, once they get healthy, then they'll be a serious threat and then they were just never healthy. In all honesty, even if you run the simulation multiple times over multiple seasons, how many versions of the Brooklyn Nets are fully healthy throughout an entire playoff run? How many versions are they mostly healthy? Do you really believe that this big three, especially with Kevin Durant's newer issues, hell, even James Harden's managing to get hurt despite being an Iron Man previous to this, Kyrie Irving in and out of lineups for health and non-health reasons, how confident are you that you're really gonna get this team at full strength for an entire playoff run? I have little confidence, if any. And I realize you could potentially say this about a couple of teams, but uh, at the same time, there are teams like the Warriors and the Bucks and the Suns that I'm pretty confident will remain healthy outside of some freak injury. So then there's that itself, just the worry about actually having the players there. 
But then there becomes the byproduct of everyone not being healthy in how they actually play together because they haven't gotten a lot of reps together. The Brooklyn Nets this season have had the most different starting lineups of any team in the league this season. That's not hyperbole, like someone tracked that. The Nets have the most different starting lineups that they've run of any team in the league. And that is because of their players constantly being in and out of lineups due to injury. That's both the case with the big three and their role players. What Nets team you're going to get on any given night is fundamentally different. And that's been the case this year. It was the case last year. And I really don't know how much that's going to hurt them, but I definitely know it's not a positive. It becomes hard to gauge how good the team actually is when you are consistently unsure of what product you're going to get. The team begins to feel like an accumulation of talent that plugs and plays where necessary, but not an actual basketball team. If anything, the Nets feel like multiple different basketball teams, which is not a good thing. Then there still exists the fear of this team being too ISO heavy, relying too much on Harden as a playmaker individually. When Kyrie Irving's not there, there is not a single secondary playmaker to be spoken of. Kevin Durant's playmaking is fine, but not particularly great. And I even think they over rely on James Harden individually. Like I've always harped before that 10 plus assists per game is not a good thing. And James Harden is in that ballpark. I know he was there last year. It feels as though with the Nets, and this is kind of the argument from the very get go, was that they're going to talent their way out of these problems, which it's still feasible that they do, but that doesn't mean these problems aren't problems. And again, if that talent doesn't end up being there, then you can't talent your way out of these problems. Then they're just problems that you have to deal with. There's also James Harden's regression, which I put that in quotes because I think it's mostly just the fact that he came in the league, or not in the league, into the season out of shape, and then the fact that he was asked to do less last year and then asked to do more this year, I don't think his brain has quite properly adjusted to the difference. His role in Brooklyn at the start was more limited, and if you look at the numbers from this year versus last, they're essentially the same, but when they've asked him to do more, he hasn't been able to do that as he was in the past, so I'm not really quite sure where James Harden is at this point, and it's definitely clear that he has struggled to adjust to the new system. There's actually been reports that he's been unhappy with Brooklyn, both the city itself, and of course the Kyrie Irving situation, it appears that he has issues with it, but there's also conflicting reports there, and you can't really say for sure, but I think the fact that it was universally believable and the fact that it's just something that's in the air is enough to be a little bit questioning. And that whole thing and the potential beef with Kyrie Irving makes me question where this team is mentally. I've never been given much of an impression that this team has a ton of chemistry. Now that's not exactly a death sentence, it is very well possible to win without everybody liking each other, but at the same time, it's nice to have that, and it's something the Nets had when they actually got Kyrie and KD that was a part of the selling point of that team, and then they thus kicked out the head coach, which I still have issue with, but side tangent there, uh, the chemistry, it just doesn't appear there. At the very least, it's not there. And at the very worst, there's actual animosity there. Kevin Durant was actually starting to have somewhat of a down season before he got hurt. Kyrie Irving is constantly in and out of lineups due to the city vaccination mandate. And he's actually been not amazing in the game that he has played so far, but it is a limited sample size, so I'll give him that break there. Then there is, of course, that whole drama with Kyrie Irving that is constantly held above the heads of that entire franchise and that entire team. And regardless of what side of the fence you're standing on, it's a distraction. The team's role player situation gets pretty damn fishy at times. They still have no concise solution at center. Joe Harris and Patty Mills are cool and LaMarcus Aldridge is good offensively even though he has cement shoes and has serious defensive limitations. Nick Claxton continues to be better in theory than he actually is in practice. The team's defense as a whole is back to being mediocre when they were really actually surprisingly good last year. They're back towards the middle of the pack again. And I'd even say their offense is not as good as it probably should be. But here's the thing. Everything that I have pointed out, even though it is a lot, none of it individually is that damning. None of the things that I've said here, I believe there's one thing here that's like going to be their serious downfall. But... It's the fact that there are so many different things working against this team. The fact that there are so many different questions 
that I have about this team. There are so many question marks that don't exist for other contenders in the NBA. Teams like the Milwaukee Bucks, the Golden State Warriors, and the Phoenix Suns, I do not have a single damn question about. Well, other than, is Steph Curry going to stop doing this, please? Other than that, though, I don't have a question about any of those teams. And the Brooklyn Nets, sure, they still have the highest ceiling because of how talented they are. They're also the biggest question mark among those top teams. So as a result, the Brooklyn Nets do not scare me like they did, and I don't get the sense from NBA fans as a whole that the Nets are some heavy favorite, as we were calling them when the Harden trade went down. Still a great team with a real chance at a championship. Do not take this as me saying they don't have a chance by any means, because they absolutely do. They are still a team that could very well put it all together and win, but I'm not really worried about other teams putting it together. The Brooklyn Nets still have to put it together, and we're at this point where you can't just keep banking on talent getting you out of these holes that you're digging for yourself. They're certainly not in a position where they have some unquestioned basketball dominance, and that's kind of where we all expected them to be at this point, but they're not. Shout out to Rudy for editing this video, but that is the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this, and keep the edge music.